There exists a problem among spy players everywhere, and this is a phenomenon known as spy syndrome. This can roughly be defined as a situation where a spy player will end up dying after every attempt at making a play, whether or not that play was successful. The reason why this happens is pretty simple. At base, Spy has a severe lack of post-backstab survivability options. His best bets are twofold should he be caught out as a Spy after attempting to make a backstab. 1. Cloak and pray to god the enemy doesn't track you down. And 2. Pull out your revolver and start shooting. Neither of these are amazing options, but this is intentional. By design, Spy is meant to be a glass cannon who can potentially kill any class in the game in an instant with the only surefire preventative measure being a stock uber charge, something not even Sniper can boast about. But he's limited by his range and the necessity to get behind enemy players in order to kill them, usually. So rather than changing Spy at base to mitigate this issue, Valve has over the years added several unlocks to the game which seek to increase Spy's post-backstab survivability. Whether that's the speed boost of the Big Earner, the resistances of the Dead Ringer, the fire countering abilities of the Spy Sickle, or the sheer amount of health given by Spy's best knife, the Conniver's Kunai. Now some people may push back on the idea that the Kunai is Spy's best knife. But they'll tell you that all of the knives, except usually the Eternal Reward, have their ups and downs that all balance each other out. These people are objectively wrong. This is unquestionably Spy's best knife, and the sheer amount of kunai spies in pubs should tell you that. I'm pretty sure I've seen more Hale's own kunais than I have for any other weapon in the game, with one possible exception being the rocket launcher. Nothing else even comes close. So high level spy players absolutely know this thing is the absolute best knife to use. But why is that? I mean, just look at that downside. Minus 55 base health? That makes you the single lowest full HP threshold to cross in the entire game. And the sheer amount of weapons that can one-shot you now is staggering. And spy mains will love to cope by saying this is an actual downside. And yeah, sometimes. Like, sure, if you happen to eat a grenade while invisible that a demo didn't even know he was shooting at you, or if you happen to get puffed by fire when you're not ready to make a play yet, yeah, your health will drain a lot faster. But my question is, how often are you dying specifically because of the kunai? That seems like a weird question considering this has the biggest base health penalty in the game, but considering how useless a spy who's been caught out is, even if he's at 125 health, I think it's a valid one. A spy with either 70 health or 125 health is likely going to get hard focused by a pyro until he's a smoldering pile of ashes the instant a single flame particle touches him. And a demo who hits an invisible spy with a pipe is going to try and follow up on that with either another pipe or a sticky bomb by predicting where he'll go next. What I'm getting at is, a spy who gets caught out before he's able to make a backstab is almost certainly going to be killed immediately afterwards anyway. That seems to largely nullify the only downside the kunai has right out of the gate, especially when you consider that getting any backstab with it will not only completely erase this downside, but make you stronger than if you were using the stock knife. See, back in Gunmetal, which in retrospect was an update with some extremely questionable balance choices, and I would revert both of these changes if given the chance, the kunai was buffed to give the spy a bare minimum of 75 health on kill, no matter what the backstab target's health was. So you can backstab an enemy with one health left, and still be massively rewarded for it by going from 70 health to 145. Just like that. Congratulations, after literally any backstab, the kunai has become a straight upgrade to the stock knife. At least the bizarre bargain requires three headshot kills to reach that level. This means you don't actually need to think about target priority, which target you'll backstab, make use of Spy's ability to see enemy health at any time. No, just blindly go in for whatever stab you want and you'll be rewarded for it no matter what. Obviously, it's more beneficial to go for healthier targets to get the full overheal benefits of being boosted to 210 HP, but the point is, no matter the target you pick, 
you have instantly become superior to the stock knife as long as you secure the kill. And you can stay superior for a while because of just how slowly the overheal decays compared to a Mediguns. And as we just went over earlier, if you weren't going to secure the kill, you were dead anyway no matter what knife you were using. And if you're not securing a kill, you're not accomplishing anything as Spy, which means you may as well be dead. Like I wish I was. Now at the bare minimum, it really isn't all that bad since a Spy with 20 more health isn't the end of the world. Hell, that would be a perfectly fine buff to give to Spy at base. But when that overheal increases, then we start to see the problems. The same update that increased the minimum health gain from the kunai also bumped up the maximum overheal from 195 to 210. And this is a very, very important change. Now, it's only 15 health. What's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that now that spy is out of the two-shot range of the vast majority of weapons in the game. Rocket launcher base damage? 90. No good. Grenade launcher, 100 base damage, not happening. A sniper can't even quickscope and then body shot anymore. Melee crits, better luck next time. Flares, stickies, the dragon's fury, the shotguns, and that's just the single shot weapons. Forget how long a heavy has to spend mowing down 210 health compared to 125. I think one of the only weapons in the game that's not impacted by this threshold all that much is the direct hit. I think I just realized why this is my favorite rocket launcher in the game. Now, for a lot of these weapons like the rocket launcher or the scatter gun, damage ramp up means you'll still be able to two-tap the spy, assuming you get right into his face, which is a very, very bad idea. So you either risk it all going for a two-shot on an enemy who will one-shot you and then snowball off of your death to kill even more people and get even more health, or keep your distance and whittle him down eventually, until he gets another stab, and then another, then another, until eventually half your team is dead from one spy who you can shoot as much as you want, but as long as the free health packs that you so generously call your teammates fail to recognize the best ways to combat him, or fail to recognize the sound of backstabbing going on behind them, you are utterly and completely helpless to stop him. This for me is the biggest issue with the kunai. By instantly replenishing and boosting the spy's health to such an insane degree upon a backstab, it effectively resets any attempt you try to make against the spy to zero as long as he has someone else to stab. This robs you of any agency you have while fighting a spy because by simply equipping this weapon and succeeding in a stab, he is demanding absolute perfection out of you in order to kill him before he simply gets another stab and sets you back to that standard of perfection. But granted, like three of those dudes legit were standing still. That's not really the problem. It's not like, oh, Spy's an overpowered class. Look at all these people I can kill instantly with my backstabs because they're standing still. Like, no, the problem is poor fucking Beans was shooting rocket after rocket after rocket at me. And it's just like, it didn't fucking matter because there were enough brainless idiots standing perfectly still that like... He's just wasting his time and ammo. He had to wait until I ran out of, like, teammates to backstab before he could finally kill me. It's a very frustrating interaction where by getting a backstab, the spy's mistake allowance is dramatically increased while yours falls through the floor. Fighting a kunai spy, pumping him full of damage, only to see him backstab a clueless heavy that has zero situational awareness is akin to Sisyphus helplessly watching that bowler slide down the hill back to square one. Yeah, keep rolling, buddy. Helpless really is the best word to describe this feeling. I know how spy works. If a spy manages to get a backstab on me, that's my bad. I should have been paying better attention. I shouldn't have got up in his face. And while it's annoying to have to play Whiplash Simulator 2007, I understand that this is the core concept behind Spy as a class, and I understand why it's in the game to begin with. It helps teach players to be aware of their surroundings, which is helpful for multiple situations, not just checking for spies. If my teammates get backstabbed and this is the first time I'm being aware of the spy, that's not on me. But killing the spy who refuses to die is still my burden or at least the burden of me and my other teammates who actually recognize him as a threat and know what they're doing. Straight up, this is not fun. 
And dying in a game is pretty much never really fun, but that's not even the problem here. If I die to a kunai spy, yeah, that sucks, especially since he's just snowballing off of my death there. But from my perspective, that's really no different from dying to any other spy. It's having no choice but to sit back and watch from a distance as the spy goes on a rampage until he finally runs out of my teammates to backstab. That's so infuriating. It's so much worse when you know you take a big chunk out of him, like a headshot or a nice direct grenade. But then one of your teammates materializes out of thin air to offer his own back as a Christmas present, undoing all of your hard work. Your own comrades, your brothers in arms, are your worst fucking enemies against a kunai spy. And it's very easy to say to just have good team coordination, or go pyro and keep the spy off of everyone's ass. But I shouldn't be forced to go pyro because one spy decided to equip one weapon and turn the server into an extremely morbid playground. There's a lot of dead kids in the sandbox. And the whole the kunai encourages team coordination thing is seriously the biggest cope spy mains can come up with for telling you this thing is not only balanced, but beneficial. No, it's not. That excuse doesn't work for the vaccinator, and it doesn't work here. Team coordination is not something you can just inject into a server. Everyone needs to be on the same page before the game even starts. And with how many players solo queue, and how many free-to-plays there are who literally can't communicate at all, organizing it on the fly, just because a good spy decided to equip a single knife unlock, is a near impossibility. And it's asking way too much. I personally have a unique issue of not wanting my voice to be recognized when I play the game, but even if that wasn't the case, Voice chat is so infrequently used that it's hardly a specific concern to me. And what's perhaps the most important, I don't need to use voice chat, or go pyro, or have good team coordination just to kill any other spy. In fact, I wouldn't need those things even if the spies had 210 health to begin with. In a vacuum, a spy with 210 health really isn't that big of a deal to fight. His combat options are still limited, and if you keep out of backstab range, it's likely you'll be able to outpace him in terms of damage unless you're playing something like Medic, or maybe if he's really good with the Ambassador. But that's not really what you're fighting. You're not fighting the spy class with boosted health. Once he equips the kunai and gets that stab, he becomes the secret 10th class. Captain Face Tank! Bitten by a radioactive ninja, this mysterious superhero has the power of eating damage and regaining his health in an instant, and keeping that extra health for a minute straight due to the dramatically reduced overheal decay. With this superpower at his disposal, he fights to prove to everyone that he is really, really good at spy, as long as he has what effectively amounts to around 600 health or more per fight. So remember like five years ago in this video when I said that Spy was a glass cannon? Well, let's just throw that out the window now because he is potentially even more tanky than an overhealed Heavy by a long shot. Now that can't possibly be correct. Heavy has 450 health while overhealed and a Kunai Spy has 210. You are bad at math, fish stick on a stick. That is true, but let me run you through a scenario here. Let's say you're a demo man up against a Kunai Spy. He gets a backstab, he's now at a full 210 overheal, and you're now aware of his presence. Cool. You shoot two pipes at him, and now he's at less than 10 health. No big deal, the splash from one more sticky should be good enough to kill him. But then he gets another backstab. Now he's right back to 210 health. Two more pipes, another backstab. Right back to 210. That's not a spy who's limited to 210 health the way a soldier is limited in his health. That's a spy whose health is dictated entirely by how many stupid motherfuckers are on your team who don't understand what a spy is. In this scenario, Captain Face Tank had an equivalent of 630 health, and it could absolutely have gone higher. And this is only an exaggeration of what can happen in game, and that we're assuming the demo's pipe aim is flawless each time he tries to kill the spy, and he's not so demoralized after the first post double pipe backstab that he just fucking kills himself. If you don't see this as all that big of a deal, what if every class had a weapon like this? 
What if the main source of damage for every class had an unlock that was functionally identical, but removed 40% of their health in exchange for making them nearly twice as healthy as their base health for getting a kill. I'm sure those god scouts who are already impervious to damage would love that scattergun. People already can't stand it when a soldier is using conch box, and that doesn't even give him overheal. But apparently, because Spy is a bad class, it's fine to give him a weapon that invalidates all of his weaknesses and turns him from a glass cannon into a tank who can brainlessly soak up damage just for doing his job? Jesus Christ, imagine the overhealing sniper rifle unlock. I jump off a fucking building. Why does this always happen to spy weapons? Anytime an option is obviously the best one to use, it's horribly imbalanced and infuriating to fight against, but spy players always just fall back on the excuse of, well, spy's a bad class, so he needs it just to play the game effectively. Why the fuck can't spy get a good unlock that makes him more playable or accessible without simultaneously being terrible to fight. I swear to god, there's like two unlocks Spy has that have never had a problem like this in their entire balance history. Now, it would be extremely disingenuous of me to pretend that Spy players getting all of these backstabs and trickstabs don't deserve their kills. This shit's hard to pull off. I certainly can't do it with any degree of reliability, even with the kunai. But what I am saying is, is that when I fill your chest cavity with enough metal and gunpowder, you deserve to be in a fucking casket. What I'm saying is, I can't say that the kunai is a crutch for bad spies or something, because obviously the players who get the most out of the kunai's benefits are some of the people who are best at spy. There's a reason all of those kunai are Hale's own, and that's because these people have put a lot of effort and practice into the class. But what I am saying is that you can absolutely get away with some impressively stupid plays because of the sheer amount of mistake allowance the kunai gives you even if you're shit at spy like I am. It's not that the kunai is always a crutch, it's that it absolutely can be. You could just get away with dumb shit that other spies can't because they don't have the immense face tank power of the kunai. And that doesn't just apply to face tanking. The kunai pretty much invalidates the existence of the other knife unlocks. Like, oh sure, your eternal reward spies can go for big chain stabs, big earner spies can use their speed boost to make some crazy escapes or be even more aggressive, and the spicicle can save your ass against the pyro, but the kunai just takes all of this potential, rolls it up into one package, and makes it completely superior to all of them in every way. The chain stabs you'll be getting with the kunai are far more beneficial than with the eternal reward, especially since you get to keep your goddamn cloak in disguise even if you fuck up, and especially if someone notices you mid chain stab, something every other knife in the game won't protect you against. Your escapes with the kunai are going to be far easier than they would be with a big earner, because for as fun as the big earner is, you are still limited to 100 health. Meaning, unlike the kunai, you're always vulnerable to someone whose aim or persistence is good enough to keep pace with you. The big earner recognizes that you're a glass cannon with significant boost, and makes you even more of a glass cannon as a balancing measure. Meanwhile, with the kunai, the massive health pool you have combined with the resistances of cloak, and especially the resistances of the dead ringer, makes escaping after a backstab trivial. And there's plenty of escapes you never could have made with any other knife. And it's just as easy to take advantage of your tankiness to be an extremely aggressive backstabbing menace. Or hell, even a gun spy if you feel like having an original thought in your head. But if you don't feel like having an original thought, then speaking of the Dead Ringer, if you're one of the billion spies in the world who uses the Kunai and Dead Ringer together, you could just poach the Big Earner's speed boost with the Dead Ringer and use that to have the best of both worlds. Hannah Montana style, baby. And even the poor Spicicle loses its niche because the kunai will erase any damaging debuff with any backstab, including Afterburn. And this does not come at the cost of using your knife for several seconds. In fact, you can be under fire from an enemy pyro, take forever to die because you're at 210 health, trickstab the very pyro who is trying to kill you, and go on your merry way like nothing even happened. Why on earth 
would you bother to use any other knife? And that seems to be the consensus that most spies I've seen in pubs have come to. It has become an absolute shock to me when I see a spy who isn't obviously new using anything else, and seeing a strange kunai that's at a level below Hale's own. Now I'm fully willing to admit that maybe that's just me and the servers I play on. The comments on the Shiv video seem to indicate that this was not a universal experience, and dear god I wish I could find the servers you people are playing on, but I can't see why it wouldn't be universal. As far as I'm concerned, the only reason not to use the kunai is if you just don't want to, or if you just straight up don't have one. Maybe you find another knife more fun to use, or maybe you've used it enough and want to try out something different. Or maybe you're a fucking saint and you actually feel bad for punishing both new players and experienced players alike for nothing more than being able to play your class effectively. Oh hey there Diamondback, how's it going? Either that, or you're playing Highlander, where I think the stock knife is the most viable? Which, hey, at least it's the best at something. A stock weapon really should be, especially when it's the one the class is based around. I guess the wrench really suffers there though. The point is, even though I understand why it's used so universally, and I understand how effectively it solved the issue of Spy Syndrome, I'm kind of just sick of the kunai. I've been sick of it since before I even became a YouTuber and started noticing that every spy in the world was equipping it at the same time. Seeing it so constantly just makes me think that all spy mains with more than a couple hundred hours on the class collectively share one brain cell. I would be thrilled to get backstabbed by a beggarner once in a while, or just to see a sick speed boosted chain staff from a distance. I'm fine with that. Just anything to get a fucking break from Captain Face Tank. On top of all the item donators, Patreon supporters, and channel members, I'd like to give thanks to Raw for helping supply me with some of the kunai clips you just watched, and helping to prove my point in a way I just wouldn't have been able to myself. Hopefully there's no hard feelings for trash talking your favorite knife for 20 minutes. I'd also like to give a shout out to my roommate who drew the art for my new OC, Captain Face Tank, Please Do Not Steal. She's taking commissions right now, so if you want any character portraits or anything like that done, I'll link her Twitter in the description. That's it for now, until next time. Our early versions of Mark Park. Well, that's cool. <laughs> I'd hate to see like an even worse version of Mark Park and saying that's already not a great map. Also, ow. Thank you. You fucking idiot! You fool! Uh. In fairness, in fairness, he should have known after getting that crossbow shot on me. <laughs> <laughs>